Hello, how's everyone doing today? I'm Carmen, and I'm so pleased that you're joining us online at VAC Kids. All month long, we've been talking about how to get unstuck from a sticky situation. And how do we do that? By trusting in God and using determination. Determination is deciding it's worth it to finish what you've started. When you're determined, you don't give up. When you're determined, you see things through all the way to the end. We have learned that we can keep going even when things seem impossible because God gives us exactly what we need. Our faith and determination show others that we trust God even through really tough times. With determination, we never have to feel stuck. Moving into the summer, VAC Kids is going to be looking a little bit differently. We've been having lots of fun over the last two months with having either M Matthew or Melissa or myself hosting, and sometimes you guys have even been able to see your small group leaders, and I have a bit of a treat later for you as well. But now that we're going into the summer, things we won't be showing up each weekend, but there will still be really fun Bible lessons and stories, music, and fun activities for you to do with your family when you check us out online at VAC Kids. Today, we're going to be hearing a true story about something that happened to a man named Philip in the book of Acts. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Inspired by the book of Acts, chapter 8, verses 26 through 40. Philip, like his friend Stephen, was a Jesus follower. Both men had been chosen to help new believers who needed food or special care. At your service. But after Stephen was killed, the Jewish religious leaders became even more bold in hunting down people who followed Jesus. They were led by a young man named Saul. Go house to house, find these Jesus people and toss them in jail. Many of the new believers left Jerusalem and scattered, but everywhere they went, they shared the story of Jesus. Jesus is God's son. He came to rescue all of us. Philip traveled to a town in Samaria where he told everyone about Jesus and even made sick people well through God's power. I can walk, look, I can dance, <laughs> praise God. Philip and the new believers in the city were filled with joy, but then an angel of the Lord appeared to Philip. Go south to the desert road that leads from Jerusalem to Gaza. Wait, what? Everything's going so well here. What good can I do in the desert? Still, Philip set out immediately. He was about to discover that he wasn't the only one with questions. Far to the south, on that very desert road, a man from Ethiopia was speeding along in his chariot, reading from a scroll. He was led like a sheep to be killed. Who's he? He who? The man was a high official in charge of everything owned by the Ethiopian queen. He believed in God and had chosen to become a Jew, even traveling for days to worship God at the temple in Jerusalem. But still, he was filled with questions as he read from scripture. This prophet, Isaiah, I don't understand what he's saying. As Philip hiked along the road, he spotted the Ethiopian official's chariot ahead. God's spirit spoke to Philip. Go to that chariot. Stay near it. On my mark, get set. Philip ran until he came alongside the chariot, where the official was still absorbed in the words of Isaiah. When he was treated badly, he was refused a fair trial. <laughs> Do you understand what you're reading? The official's eyebrows shut up, and he nearly dropped the scroll. Stop the chariot! As the chariot slowed, the official peered down at Philip. How can I understand? I need someone to explain it to me. I'm someone. Then come sit up here with me. Thank you. Show me where you're reading. Right here. He was led like a sheep to be killed, just as lambs are silent while their wool is being cut off. He did not open his mouth. When he was treated badly, he was refused a fair trial. Who can say anything about his children? 
His life was cut off from the earth. The official frowned in concentration. Tell me, please, who is the prophet talking about? Himself or someone else? He's talking about the one God has sent to rescue all of us. His name is Jesus. As the two men traveled along that hot, dusty road, Philip shared the whole story of Jesus, how Jesus gave his life for each of us and, and was raised to life again. This, this, this is amazing. This changes everything. Ahead, the men could see a few lone palm trees. As they approached, sunlight flared off a clear pool of water. Look, water, what can stop me from being baptized? <laughs> Let's do it. Stop the chariot. Philip and the official climbed down from the chariot, and Philip led the man down into the water. I baptize you in the name of Jesus. Yes, yes, praise God. Dripping wet and filled with joy, the two men came up out of the water. Philip, you'd love Ethiopia. You really should. Philip? Philip? Philip had suddenly, completely disappeared. In fact, God's spirit had whisked him away. He's gone. Only God could have done that. Let's get a move on. I've got more reading to do. The Ethiopian official went on his way, a changed man. And Philip found himself in the town of Azotus. Um, what just happened? Well, I'm sure there are more people around here who need to hear about Jesus. Both Philip and the Ethiopian official had continued to be faithful and seek God, even when they couldn't see the whole picture. And the story of Jesus continued to spread. Let's pray. God, you are so big. There's so much about you that we can discover when we read the Bible and when we talk about you with other people. Thank you for inviting us to ask questions. Thank you that you're not afraid of our questions. And thank you that you listen to all the things that we say. You hear our prayers and you give us answers to the things that we ask you about. Please give us the strength to keep going even when we're confused or we don't understand. Help us to have faith like Philip and the official did even in those times when we can't see the whole big picture. We love you, and we pray these things in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen. Now, Philip probably had some questions about God, why God was sending him down a desert road, but he still obeyed what God asked him to do. The Ethiopian official had questions too. Even though he couldn't see the full picture of God's big story, he still chose to worship God. He wasn't afraid to ask Philip about something that he didn't understand. God used Philip to answer the royal officials' questions, and the story of Jesus continued to spread. That brings us to our bottom line. Keep going even when you have questions. Isn't it cool how God asks, he allows us to ask questions? He's not afraid of our questions. He wants us to seek after him and come to know him better. And there's so much about God for us to discover. So I think we should ask God a question right now. Let's ask God for an idea about something in your life that he wants to help you to have determination with. So we're going to take a minute, or more like 30 seconds, and just quietly in your heart, ask God for an idea, a word, a picture, a feeling, or a thought, or maybe even a scripture about something that he wants to help you with, to have determination to see it through all the way to the very end. So let's do that right now. You can close your eyes, you can open up your hands, but let's ask God for an idea. You know, one thing I really love about when we ask God a question like that is that when we slow ourselves down long enough to be quiet and still for even 30 seconds, his peace just comes in. And all the things that we're worrying about, he says, I want to help you with those things. So I hope that you experience that when you ask him a question. 
Because like the royal official, we don't have to be afraid to ask questions of God. If there's something that you don't understand, maybe it's something that you've read in the Bible or something that you heard someone say about God, ask a good question. And you know who you can ask? You can ask God, or you could ask someone you know of who knows God. So that maybe is your parents or your grandparents or a neighbor, or maybe it's a, one of your friends. Their mom and dad know a lot about God. Ask someone to help you to find that answer, and I'm sure they'd love to help. Remember, sometimes we might have a question, but we can't find the answer. That's okay. Even when the answers don't come easily, we can keep going and make the wise choice. As we head into the summer, we aren't going to be seeing each other every single weekend. But I want you guys to know that I'm praying for you, that I love you, and that I'm really excited to hear about what God is doing in your lives as you trust in Him more and more and more. And remember, if you have any questions about God, you could send me an email or get your parents to send me a note on Facebook. I'd love to help you answer your questions. But even more so, I think you should ask your parents to help you to answer your questions. They're really smart. And if they love Jesus, they can help you to learn how to love Jesus better too. Through the summer, we're gonna be having a new theme, not determination. We're gonna be learning all about faith in June and July. And faith is kind of interesting because it acknowledges that we can't see God with our eyes, but we can grow in faith when we focus on who He is and what He's done for us. When we take a closer look, we can learn to trust in what we can't see because of what we can see. Did you guess what the theme is going to be? It's going to be focus, like with our eyes. I think that's going to be a lot of fun, and I can't wait to check out what's happening each weekend at VAC Kids. Now I have a few more messages from some other people who love you guys and miss you and want to wish you a fabulous summer. Take a look. Hey VAC Kids, this is it for now. We're going to have a break through the summer um, and do a bit of a different um, VAC Kids online so you aren't going to get to see our faces and I was hoping we'd get to see yours before the summer, but uh, we are going to pray that in the fall something can look different so that we can all be together soon enough. I'm going to pray that you get to see your friends, that you get to do the fun things that you always do in the summertime, and that you just have some really special family time and family connections um, all through this summer. So enjoy your summer. Make sure on the weekends, with your, uh, talk to your mom and dad or grandparents or whoever you're staying with on the weekend. Make sure they go to our church website and look for the links to find your story video and your bottom line and all that information. We're putting new stuff up every weekend for you. So stay in touch. Stay in touch with Jesus. Pray. Be kind to others. And just treat others the way you want to be treated all, all summer. And we hope to see you really soon after summer. Love you guys so much. Bye. As you guys just heard, we're going to be taking VAC Kids on a bit of a break this summer. But I want you guys to know that we love you so much and we miss you. And we look forward to when we can be together again at the church. But until then, my prayer for you is that this summer would be, even though maybe a little different, it would be great and it would be fun and that you'd find creative ways to spend time with friends and to get closer to God. Remember, just because we aren't meeting at the church doesn't mean that we can't continue to seek God. And so I want you guys to know I love you and miss you so much. And so, until we meet again, bye VAC kids. I've never recorded before. <laughs> Here we go. I think we're recording. We are. So, are you ready? Yep. One, two. We, we love you, me and Z kids. Have a great <laughs> summer. <laughs> Do we need to try that again? Yeah. Okay, that's a good practice. Uh, yeah, I think I have the headphones on. It's hard, it's hard to keep up with everyone. I can't hear anything. <laughs> a little bit slower, right? We don't want to rush oh, through it because then they won't hear us. Follow Carmen's lips. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Good idea. You ready? One, <laughs> two, three. We love you, kids. Have a great, great summer. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. <laughs>